Picture, if you will, a world where everyone loves themselves more than anyone else. Mm. Or how about a world where their life is founded on selfish love, love that is only, e only given if it is easy and only benefits the giver. It doesn't take much to imagine this, does it? Because our world is filled with counterfeit love. Imagine how different things would look if the world obeyed God's word and esteemed others better than themselves. If we loved people even when it was hard, expecting nothing in return. As Christians living in a selfish, sin-filled world, we can demonstrate true love, love that is unconditional and selfless because of the love that God has poured out on us. Watch carefully now as we uh, start. We're going to start um, as we take a look at loving your family. I think most of us know that loving our family can be difficult. So two sisters, Greta and Brianna, have invited their friends Ruby and Ellie over to bake cookies. This is just exactly, exuberantly what I would realistically want to be doing today. Spending time baking pleasantly palatable cookies with my most funnest friends ever. Funnest? That is not a word, Brianna. Oh, come on. Well, you know what's not the most funnest ever? When your brother keeps telling you about his soccer tournaments and you really don't care to hear all the details that don't really mean anything to you. He wants me to come watch him play sometime, but I'm just not interested in that kind of thing. It's just boring. Well, at least you don't have a brother like mine who thinks he has a painting business. I mean, he painted the neighbor's fence, and then a guy from the gym asked him to paint a room in his house. And now he's all into this painting stuff. And he keeps He's constantly telling me about his new tools and, like, paintbrushes he's invested in for his business. Ugh. Yeah. Oh, it's my dad. Just a minute. Uh, hi, Dad. Uh, how late am I going to be here? I don't know. You want me to proofread your latest booklet tonight? I do not have time for that. I don't want to leave here early and... Hey, why don't you have Mom proofread it for you? Sure. Okay, perfect. Bye. Uh, got out of that one. Shh, be quiet. I do not want our little sister coming yeah. down here to bake these cookies with us. She's just so annoying and just makes problems in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, man. Too late. You should see what she needs. Yeah. No, you should. She's your sister, too. Besides, I might faint if I see blood. Oh, okay. <laughs> Josie, go find mom. She'll help you with your, your arm. Pause. Let's rewind this scene and figure out if they demonstrated true love, what that looked like. This is just exactly, exuberantly, what I would realistically want to be doing today. Baking pleasantly palatable cookies with my most funnest friends ever. Funnest? Brianna, you know that's not a word. <laughs> okay, you guys are my most fun fabulous friends then. Is that better? Okay. Well, you're so funny, Brianna. <laughs> my most fun fabulous friend ever is my brother Scott. Aww. Do your brothers have things they're crazy about, like my brother? Mm -hmm. Scott is so excited about anything soccer, and he talks constantly about it. I try to go to his games sometimes to support him, because it really means a lot to him. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, Ellie. I was really impressed with his skill. He's worked really hard at it. Mm -hmm. I try to be excited about it for him, even though soccer doesn't personally interest me. Mm -hmm. That's really good, Ellie. I mean, that will go a long ways in building a healthy sibling relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can relate to what you're saying. My younger brother just started a new painting business this year, and he is so enthusiastic about it. It's kind of cute, because he's only done a couple paint jobs, but he has really big vision. So I figured I might as well encourage him and build him up in his vision as much as I can, because you never know where it'll go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's see. Oh, it's my dad. Just a minute. Hi, Dad. Oh, how late am I going to 
be here tonight? I'm not really sure. Um, oh, he wanted me to proofread your latest booklet tonight. Uh, well, I could probably make that work. I'd have to leave you a little bit early, but that's okay. Sure. All right, you're welcome. Bye. All right, girls, my dad needs my help tonight, so I'm gonna have to leave a little bit early, but I can probably stay for another half hour. Oh, that's too bad. Hey, guys, would you mind if I went and told Josie that she could help? I mean, yeah. little sisters can be a handful in the kitchen, but I know she really loves the presents. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, What's the matter, Josie? Let me see. Oh, that looks oh. awful, Josie. I will go run and get some bandages before I terrifically faint from the sight of blood. <laughs> Thank you, Brianna. story brings us to a party where Ellie, Brianna, Rudy, and Greta are socializing. Let's take a look and see what loving your friends looks like. So I have this friend who has been making some really bad decisions and I feel like I should say something to her. She knows better, you know, but I just don't want to create any waves. It's just so much easier to be quiet and say nothing, and I just hate confrontation. But, hey, so what have you all done up to this week? Oh, well, as you girls know, I don't currently have a boyfriend, but there are lots of fish in the sea, and I've been doing some fishing. So some guys are like totally a no. Mm. Like, if I'm a starfish, he's a, a manatee. <laughs> so don't go together. Oh but those guys are just fun to play with. So would Josh be one of these manatees you're talking about? Well, yeah, I think he likes me. And we've actually had a lot of deep, you know, heart-to-heart -heart conversations, but I don't take it seriously. Oh my, he just walked in. I'll be right back. I'm going to go talk to him. Oh, Brianna. Um, Ellie, are you still sulking over the loss of that ring? Loss of a ring? Ruby, are you kidding me? I lost my fiance. Yeah, but it's been a while. I think it's time that you put a smile on your face and get over it. You're not very much fun anymore. Anyways, Greta, did you invite your friend Mary to come tonight? Oh, Mary. Um, well, yeah, I guess I would call her my friend. Um, I decided not to tell her about the party. Oh. But then my sister went and invited her anyway. Go figure. Because, you see, Mary broke her hand recently, and mm -hmm. she can't play any of our favorite games, and she is just not very much fun to hang out with anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, here she comes. Hi. Hi, Mary. Uh, we were just talking about you. Um, well, we're going to go in the other room and play a game. You can join us if you want, I guess. Thanks, but I heard you guys are going to play Dutch Blitz, and I can't play that with my wrist. Mm. Oh, well, I guess you'll just have to watch. Come on, yeah. go. Pause. Let's rewind and see what this scene would look like if everyone demonstrated true love. So, so I have this friend who has been making some really bad decisions, and I feel like I should say something to her. She knows better, you know? I really hate confrontation. It's really hard. It's so much easier just to keep quiet. But I know I need to speak the truth to her in love. Oh, wow. Ellie, you are so brave. I will definitely be praying for you to have courage and wisdom as you speak to her. That's got to be really hard. Oh, thanks. Uh, so what has everybody been learning this week? Well, as you girls know, I don't currently have a boyfriend, mm -hmm. but God has been teaching me a lot about how to relate to guys in a respectable way with sisterly love. Mm -hmm. And I know that someday God will bring me my one and only, but there are some guys that are for sure I know, mm -hmm. you know, starfish versus manatee. But I'm learning <clears> that <throat> even though I can have healthy friendships with the manatees, <laughs> I still need to be careful to not play around with their hearts or mm -hmm. lead them on falsely in any way. So would Josh be one of these manatees you're talking about? <laughs> Josh is. We are really good friends, but I've decided that it's not the wisest for us to have like deep heart-to-heart -heart conversations. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, I love him as a brother in Christ, but I want us to both, you know, guard our hearts, you know, but still be able to build each other up in the Lord. Oh, speaking of Josh, 
Hannah's siblings just walked in. I bet you they would love to play this game. I'll go ask them. In the morning. Oh, Ellie, are you doing okay? Oh, I still can't believe I lost my fiance, Ruby. Mm. It really hurts. Yeah, that must be hard. I know God will work through it, though, and make you stronger in the end. I'm praying for you. Oh, thanks, Ruby. I appreciate it. Mm. Did you invite your friend Mary to come tonight? Oh, yes, I did. Uh, she broke her hand recently, oh, so no. she can't play most of our favorite games. Mm. But I figured there's some things that she can per participate in. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Hi, Mary. We were just talking about you. We're going to be going in the other room to play a game. Would you like to join us? Thanks, but I heard you guys are playing Dutch Blitz, and I can't play that with my hands. Oh. Well, we could maybe play something different, yeah. or just you and I could do something. Thanks, that'd be great. Right. Right. Okay, now what about love your enemies? That's not something that true love can fake very well. desire to bring our profoundly grumpy neighbor these cookies today. I know. I wish Mom hadn't asked us to bring these to her. I mean, I almost guarantee you the neighbor won't even say thank you. Yeah. There she is. She looks surpassingly angry. I agree. Hi, Mrs. Donna. We brought you some rich, flavorless cookies. I don't want no flavorless cookies. No, not flavorless. Flavorous. Meaning they have lots of flavor. Well, flavor or no flavor, I don't have time for company. So would you get out of my space and mind your own business? Okay. Fine then, we'll just eat the cookies ourselves. Yeah. You knew you wouldn't be grateful. Go right ahead, you disrespectful youngsters. I don't need no charity from you. Whoa, pause. Let's rewind this scene and see if we can demonstrate what true love would really look like. I don't categorically desire to bring our profoundly grumpy neighbor these cookies today, but maybe that's just what she needs to cheer her up. You never know. Right. She seems like a really sad lady. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm glad we thought of bringing her these. This is a good way we can show her the love of Christ regardless of how she treats us. Mm -hmm. There she is. She looks surpassingly angry. I agree. Oh. Hi, Mrs. Donna. He brought you some rich, flavorless cookies. I don't want no flavorless cookies. No, not flavorless. Flavorous. Yeah. Meaning they have lots of flavor. Well, flavor or no flavor, I don't have time for company. So would you get out of my space and mind your own business? Oh, okay. sure, we won't stay. Um, I'll just set them right here for you. Hope yeah. you enjoy them. <laughs> well, if you say so, but, but don't go thinking I need charity. Well, you have a fantabulous day, Mrs. Donna. You know, I think that charity, meaning God's kind of selfless love, is exactly what she needs. Let's not give up on her. I totally agree. Okay, we have covered love for friends, and love for family, love for friends, and love for enemies. But there's another big one that you're probably thinking about. Romantic love. Oh, that is just so sweet. Mm. I love how this movie ends. Mm. I know, and it's just so darlingly romantic. How they just met at the Christmas skating party. When they fall in love, and within a few days, they know that they want to spend the rest of their life together. Mm. I hope that's how it happens for me. Yeah, but what if the guy ends up being a jerk and breaking your heart? I know what that's like. Oh, I'm not worried about that, Ellie. I think that first impressions are exceptionally accurate, and my heart <laughs> will just know. Besides, I mean, I don't want to be too picky or I'll never get a husband. That's a good point. I mean, one thing that I loved about the movie was how he treated her like a princess. Yeah, and how from the moment they meet, they do everything together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you and your boyfriend do. It drives me crazy. All you ever care about is spending time with Ben and talking on the phone to Ben. And you never have time 
for me or anybody else anymore. That, that is not true. Yes, it is. Girl, girl, All girl. you care about is yourself. You never think about serving other people when Ben's around. It's all about you. Girls. Well, what did you think about the boundaries the couple had in the movie? They went a little far in my opinion, but I guess it's probably fine. Well, I would not say that they went too far. I mean, they didn't do anything that was exactly wrong. To be honest, my boyfriend has different boundaries than I do. He's way more careful than I am. Sometimes I have to stretch him a little and tell him to relax his standards. He'll have to work with me if he wants to keep on dating. Wow, Ruby, you sound like a great influence. <laughs> well, I say that we all stop stressing about it, and hopefully our love stories will end up just like the movies. You know, and they live happily ever after. Pause. Let's rewind this scene and see what it would look like if everyone demonstrated true love. this movie ends. Mm -hmm. I know, and it's so darlingly romantic how they just met at the Christmas skating party, mm -hmm. and then a week later, they know that they want to spend the rest of their lives together. But I have to admit, that is a bit unrealistic. Yeah. You, know, you really can't get to know someone well enough to marry them in a week. Mm -hmm. If you don't take time to get to know someone, you can have huge regrets and consequences later on. Mm -hmm. They can seem nice for a while, but in the long run, you may find out they're not what you thought. Mm -hmm. I know what it's like to have your heart broken. Yeah, I am so sorry that your engagement got broken. But I do think in the long run it was a good thing, though. <laughs> but like you said, first impressions are not always exceptionally accurate, and our hearts can deceive us. Greta often reminds me that rather than just making compromises to get a boyfriend, we need to look down the road into the future. Like, ask ourselves questions like, does this man really love God? Like, would he be a good husband? Would he be a good father to my children? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And another thing God has been teaching me is that I need to care for and love the people that are around me, not just my boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Because it's so easy to get wrapped up in doing things with him and then to forget that there are other people around me who need me too. Yeah, you're getting better about that. It really means a lot to me when you make it a priority to spend time with me even though I know you could be spending time with Ben instead. Good. I want you to know that you still are important to me, especially as my sister. Mm -hmm. Aww, thanks, Greta. What did you girls think about the boundaries the couple had in the movie? I thought they went a little far. Yeah, they weren't very wise in how they went about things. You know, it's interesting how different people have different standards. Mm -hmm. To be honest, my boyfriend has more conservative ideas about dating than I do, but I appreciate his heart's desire to do what's right, and I will support him in following his convictions. I'm happy to work through these differences with him, and I would never want him to do something that was compromising on his moral convictions. Mm -hmm. well, that's great. I mean, it's awesome to see that you're building him up mm -hmm. rather than expecting him to compromise. Yeah. Well, a splendorous conversation, girls. I am so glad that we took time to talk about this and develop godly ideas mm -hmm. of romance and relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes movies can give us false expectations about romance, and just cause us to think too much on that topic. So next time, let's try not to watch a movie that's so predominantly focused on romance. Sounds good. Now, most importantly, let's take a look at love for God, because that affects every aspect of our life. Oh, all right, everybody got their coffee? Let's get this meeting started. I am so pumped about getting this soup kitchen charity started. I have always wanted to be the president of something like this. Uh, wait, who said you are the president? Yeah. Well, I think I'm the most capable person, obviously, but we can talk about that later. Well, I just think it's so cool that we get to show love to these people who are despairingly on the streets. Exactly, this is just what these people need. When I think about all the heartbreaking things I've been through, I ask God, 
Why me? But he never answers. Why would God let bad things happen to us if he really loves us? I think a lot of these homeless people are in a similar situation, and I will be able to empathize with them. Um, it sounds to me like you are a little bit angry at God. How do you expect that you are going to be able to help other people who are angry if you have the same problem yourself? Greta, how dare you say that? You have no idea what it's like to be in my shoes. And besides, if we're going to be pointing fingers, didn't I hear you say the other day that you didn't want our soup kitchen to have the name of Christ in it because it might be too offensive to some people and you didn't want to seem radical in the community? <laughs> oh, Fred, come on, girls. Can't we just have peace and love between ourselves like the Bible talks about? <laughs> How can you go preaching the Bible to us when you don't even care enough to pick it up and read it hardly ever. You are just being hypocritical. Yeah, and how are you expecting to show the love of God to the people in the soup kitchen if you don't even care enough to read God's word? You should talk, Ruby. When was the last time that you went to church? Like, oh, two years ago at Christmas? You think my priorities are wrong? Well, what about yours? Seriously, you're bringing up church? I'm leaving. Pause. Let's rewind and see what this scene would look like if everyone demonstrated true love. All right, everybody got their coffee? <laughs> Let's get this meeting started. I am so pumped about getting this soup kitchen charity started. <sighs> I'm so thankful that God has laid it on each of our hearts to reach our community through this. Mm -hmm. At some point, we do need to talk about leadership and who will serve as president and all of that. Well, I would vote that you should be the president. I mean, you're the best yeah. fit for the position. Well, maybe, but we can talk about that later. Well, I just think it's so cool that we get to show the love of God to these people who are despairing me on the streets. Exactly. This is just what these people need. I think about the heartbreaking things I've been through and how God has been faithful and helped me to forgive. Mm. I think a lot of homeless people are struggling with hurts and unforgiveness, and because of what I've been through, I will be able to understand them better and share Christ's love with them. Mm. That's really good, Ellie. You have trusted God and allowed him to heal you through the pain, and that will be a testimony to these people. Mm. I mean, that's what charity is all about, right? It's mm. about showing the love of God mm. and the gospel to people. Mm. I think that our soup kitchen should have the name of Christ in it, because... Yeah. I mean, that's what he, it's all about him, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's sure. a topic idea. Yeah, for sure. The other day I was testing some soup recipes, and I was thinking about how hot soup is delicious, and we all know that, but lukewarm or cold soup is <laughs> rather disgusting, um, and I just want my life to be hot for the Lord, and our soup kitchen should be a piping hot testimony to our community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And some people may even think that we are too radical for Christ. But, I mean, he gave his life for us. Mm. We should give him 100%. Mm -hmm. Amen to that. Let's never serve lukewarm soup. Mm. And let's never be lukewarm for the Lord. I am so glad that we are all on the same page. Mm -hmm. This is so invigorating. We get to share the word of God and the love of God with these people. Mm -hmm. And Brianna... With how much I know you love and read the Word of God, I know you will take every opportunity you have to share it. <laughs> You've been such a good example to me of reading the Word regularly. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Well, hopefully we can help these people that come to the soup kitchen to have uh, to come to a good church. Yeah, right. Church fellowship is so important. And I know that, you know, you guys, especially you, Ruby, mm -hmm. would agree because I've seen how you make it a priority in your life, mm -hmm. even when it's not convenient for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, being part of the church is such a blessing. Mm -hmm. For sure. I've been reading 1 Corinthians 13 over and over again, mm -hmm. where it talks about God's love, charity. Mm -hmm. And it's just really important because service is empty unless it's done with charity. Mm -hmm. Yes, let's remember as we start this soup kitchen charity that its foundation and fuel is the love of God. Charity! charity. So what about you? 
Will you settle for shallow, worldly love? Or will you live a life that is full of true charity that God has called you to live?